Welcome and thank you for tuning in. My name is Carrie with Character Productions and today we're going to go over another witness that was called in the Waukesha Parade Attack trial. Darrell Brooks actually called this witness himself. So this was supposed to be a defense witness. <laughs> now, at first, I get so angry watching this and I haven't watched it in a bit. So it'll be nice to kind of watch it with you guys again. But I get really angry watching this because this woman is obviously this what happened what she saw that day she's another one of those that i would say was emotionally affected by this she has ptsd on this big time and she gets upset it's you know you just want to go over and hug her and well we'll just watch we'll just watch together and and, and but i want to say too at the end Justice prevails because um, Brooks does get his panties in a wad, so that's kind of fun to watch, too. Okay, here we go. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Babias. Correct. I'm surprised I got it right. Uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I am a law enforcement dispatch supervisor. And <laughs> how long have you been doing that now? I've been in law enforcement for 16 years. So note, she's a dispatcher. She's a supervising dispatcher, So, which means that she's heard a lot of stuff in her time, right? But yet, this is something that just, mm. these people are already trained to kind of deal with a lot of stuff. But to imagine that she has to deal with him. The evening of November 21st, 2021. Um, were you were you on duty that evening? I was not. Uh, where were you doing that evening? I was attending the Waukesha Christmas Parade with my family. And do you recall what time you arrived there with your with your family that that evening? I arrived to the parade shortly after it started, so it was right after four p.m. And do you recall where you were positioned at with your family uh, when you arrived at the parade that evening? Yes. <laughs> and where were you positioned at? Um, I was um, towards the beginning of the parade. I was on Main Street um, where it connects with White Rock Avenue. Did anything catch your eye that evening when you were positioned uh, watching the parade with your family? Yes. What did you see? I saw a um, red SUV um, coming from White Rock Avenue. Um, the vehicle caught my attention because um, people started yelling and um, the vehicle, the driver was honking the horn. Now keep in mind, you guys, this was part of his defense, if, if you say he even had one, that anybody who he saw testified to the police that they had heard a hon horn honking he was going to try to call them to the stand because he thought you know well they should have you know I, that i i was honking my horn these people should have gotten out of my way <clears throat> and do you recall to the best to the best of your knowledge it's been, it's been a little bit um the driver of the vehicle you observed was honking his horn. Was it gesturing to people? Gesturing. With a J. No, that would be gesturing. Uh, yes. And uh, what, what do you see? What did you see the, the gesturing as? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, what was the gesturing? What was the driver gesturing? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I'm... It's okay. Uh, so he was taking his hand and going like this, really rapidly, aggressively. We, so we... For the record, the witness had her right hand up above, probably at a, above her, uh, I wouldn't say at a 90 degree angle, but somewhere maybe at a 45 degree angle with her hand waving back and forth, back and forth multiple times in a rapid motion. Go ahead. 
you yourself being in law enforcement and just and just based on what you were observing, the driver of the vehicle you observed was honking his horn and gesturing with this motion. Would you take that motion as trying to alert people to move out of the way? Um, Grounds. Sustain us to the form of the question, please rephrase. How, how, how did you yourself take that gesture? I took that gesturing as the driver was telling people to get out of his way. Do you, let me back up. Did the vehicle pass pretty close to where you were positioned? Yes, the vehicle almost struck my daughter. Do you recall seeing the driver? I looked the driver right in the eyes. And how did the driver look? The driver looked like through me. What do you mean through you? D describe what you mean by through you. I feel that it is very hard to explain that look, um, but it was very frightening. Do you recall what the driver was wearing? She's, she's my favorite witness, I think. Um, next to the granny that, that, that testified, but she just is so real and honest and she just seems like she's so likable you know and uh it's this it gets good the driver had a like hoodie sweatshirt or sweatshirt on um and something on his head i wasn't sure if it was the hood of the sweater or maybe a beanie hat it was winter i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure we're going to see any here <sighs> okay so, so what I'm sorry to keep stopping out and I, I will continue on here in a minute. Why, why does he keep bringing up the hair and what he was wearing? Because I feel like he thinks that that's going to sway the jury, even though they have photos of him and he thinks maybe, Oh, I cut my hair. I don't want nothing like I used to look. I, I just I, it, it, help me out here in the comment section, guys. I did see hair. Yes. How would you describe the hair? Um, the hair on the head was in front, like dreads down here from what I could see underneath the hood or the hat. Um, and then there was facial hair, beard and mustache. Did, did the vehicle... Hold on, I just need to make a record of, um, she was also using her hands, that's okay, um, to, uh, indicate, uh, at the neck, like under the chin, <coughs> neck area, with her hands coming down a few inches to indicate what she was describing as hair. Uh, being seen from um, the driver. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, sir. When you observed the vehicle approaching, was the vehicle speeding? When the vehicle was approaching from White Rock, the vehicle was not speeding at that time. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall there uh, being any barriers present where, where you were positioned at? Yes. Do you recall if the vehicle you observed had any tinted windows? I do not recall. Were you able to make out a license place number of the vehicle being that? License place. Passed so closely by you? <laughs> No, once the vehicle continued past my position, I was more concerned about my children that were with me. I'm assuming at some point you spoke with the law enforcement about what you saw that evening. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you, do you recall what agency that was? I do. And what agency was that? The FBI. At what point were you not able to see the SUV once it passed you? Um, I lost sight of the SUV once it went into a bunch of people. Do you recall what date uh, it was that you spoke with the FBI agents on? Was that the same evening or 
a few days after. It was not the same evening of the parade, um, but it was that week. It was within the next few days. The day you spoke with uh, FBI agents, do you recall stating the driver was wearing a red top that appeared to be made out of a sweatshirt-like material? I don't recall exactly what was said um, to the agent, um, but I do remember the sweatshirt, yes. A red sweatshirt? It's possible. <clears throat> well, he was wearing a red t-shirt. Just a little bit ago, you said that, well, when asked the question of, did you recall here for the driver, You stated and made the gesture that the hair was in front. Do you recall saying it? Yes, sir. Do you recall when speaking with FBI agents stating that the hair was pulled back? The hair appeared to be like possibly in a ponytail, but there was it was so full that it was coming forward. Do you recall? Uh, Oops, sorry. Well, let me back up. Did you did you leave the parade at that point? <coughs> at Shoot. what point? After seeing the vehicle. Yes. <clears throat> Were you injured the evening of the uh, the incident? Yes. You were injured? Yes, I was. Didn't prep your witness. Any reason why that's not reported? Probably because I didn't tell anyone else. Oh, I just want to hug her. If you were injured, why not tell anyone? Because I haven't wanted to talk about the traumatic experience that I went through for still reliving um, the weeks and days after the incident. Bless her heart. It doesn't make any sense. You talk to FBI agents a few days where you, you said you didn't, to be fair, you said you didn't know. You said it was that week is, is what you said, the same week. You spoke with FBI agents no injuries. They didn't ask me about injuries. Well, you would, would it be fair to say that that kind of information would come up when talking to law enforcement, seeing as how you yourself work in law enforcement? <coughs> it just seems odd, don't you think? I do not. Um, I was not physically injured. Oh. Oh, dumbass. but you didn't report this at any time whatsoever. That's the answer to the question. Grounds. Sustained. Already answered. So did you speak to anyone about this in law enforcement? Objection made. Grounds. Um, over rules, she may answer. He clarified law enforcement. Did, he speak, did she speak to anyone about this in law enforcement? I interpreted this as the injury. Right. So go ahead. I feel like, no, I did not. <clears throat> he can't wrap his head around it. He's such a moron. Did you file any claims related to the incident? No, I did not. if she's been struggling with it and didn't want so anybody to know. today, your first time uh, 
bringing up your alleged injury? No, it is not. At some point, you were uh, subpoenaed by the district attorney's office to testify here to, well, to testify in this trial. Would that be fair to say? Yes, it is. Do you recall when you received that uh, subpoena? Um, from the district attorney's office, it was in July. And do you recall whom you spoke with about uh, the information regarding the subpoena? I contacted the victim witness advocate, <clears throat> um, Carrie Peterson. You contacted the Ms. Peterson after receiving the subpoena? Correct. It, the instructions told me to. You ever spoke with anyone directly at the district attorney's office? I, no, I, the correction. Yes, when I walked in today, I met there and let them know I was here. And then they walked me into a room and I waited until I was called by you. <laughs> so before today you had uh, no interactions with anyone related to the district attorney's office besides the, I think you said victim advocate? So the victim advocate is who I've been in connection with and letting me know when to come and all of that. Of the three district attorneys uh, seated to my left at this table, had you had any interactions uh, uh, of any kind with any of those three district attorneys? I have not. And I believe just for the record, when you asked that attorney Basie was just pointing to herself and the two people next to her so it's clear, because there's, since there's two tables. Zach we'll makes me smile. Since there's two tables of individuals, I think she wanted to make the witness aware. And I just wanted to point it out for the record since it happened. Does, Ma Does Zach make anybody else smile? He makes me smile. He's so good with the witnesses. Hmm. Working in law enforcement for 16 years, I'm sure this isn't your first time being involved in a trial. Would that be fair to say? I have not been in a trial for law enforcement. No, I have not. You've, you've never... Witnessed the trial, sat at a trial, been in a trial? I have not. Have you ever testified in any uh in any way before today? Judge Where else? Um overall she may answer. I have testified before, yes. So it would be fair to say that you would have knowledge of where an alleged defendant and a district attorney would sit in a courtroom, correct? Oh, for crying out loud. I know where they're sitting, yes. <coughs> I want to back up a little bit to the observation of the vehicle. The evening of November 21st, 2021. While, the, while you observed the vehicle approaching your position, did you see it strike anyone? I did not see the vehicle strike anyone, no. From your opinion, observing the vehicle approaching your position, did it appear that the the vehicle attempted to strike anyone? Yes. And why would you come to that conclusion? Because I saw an officer have to jump out of the way in order for the when it was approaching. When it was, a was, when it was approaching. Hold on, hold on, hold on, everyone. 
the question was asked, this witness is going to be allowed to answer the question fully <coughs> without interruption. Go ahead and answer the question. Thank you. Um, I misunderstood him's question, I guess. No, um, answer the question okay. that as you understood it. Yep, so I saw that um, an officer have to get out of the way um, and he was attempting to stop Mr. Brooks from um, driving through the parade and he was um, at the last minute jumped out of the way from uh, the vehicle, otherwise he would have been struck. You just used the name Mr. Brooks. Oh, for Lord. the first time that you've been, would that be fair to say? I don't understand your question. You just used the name Mr. Brooks for the first time since you've been testifying. Is that fair to say? <coughs> Say my name, say my name. That's fair to say, yes. Why haven't you used that name before? You've been up there for quite some time. It, I didn't need to. <laughs> so what changed for the last question that you needed to? I don't understand your question. <laughs> you wow. just stated that you didn't mention the name before because you didn't need to. So what about the last question that you answered made you feel like you needed to use the name for that question and no question before that? I don't know. <laughs> She's like, he's an idiot. Why is he asking me this? Now he's fixing to get, it's going to be, what do they call it? <coughs> he's going to get argumentative with the witness. Out of curiosity, how did you come to the knowledge of that name? It was on the subpoena I received last week. <clears throat> In capital letters. <laughs> You just stated a little bit earlier in your testimony that you received your subpoena in July. Now you said last week. Those are both correct. So you received two separate subpoenas? Correct. What was the difference between the two? One was from the district attorney's office and one was from you. He's so stupid he doesn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so the one that you received from the district attorney's office in July didn't have a, a case caption on it? A case, what's a case caption? Just one second. One second, Your Honor. Your Honor, I just have to ask a question. I really don't know what the relevance is for the purpose of this here. trial. There was no objection at first. But there is no. <laughs> Get him, Leslie. The objection under 906.11. I don't believe it advances. I think I the think, trial. I think you know where I was getting at with the question. Then you need to ask your question directly, sir. Go ahead, but I'm sustaining it as to the form of the question. When you were subpoenaed in July by the district attorney's office, the subpoena didn't contain information to the case you were being subpoenaed for? Objection to relevance. Grounds. Sustained, you don't have to answer that. Um, I sustained the objection on that, those grounds. Ask the question, I believe, that you're trying to ask, not that one. Was the name that you mentioned, Mr. Brooks, anywhere on the subpoena that you received from the district attorney's office in July? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Oh, sustained. Grounds for the sustained. That not was relevant. The... What? Mind boggling. Mind boggling. <coughs> Sir, were, 
in July when you received your subpoena from the district attorney's office, were you even aware of what you were being subpoenaed for? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. She's testifying in the trial and it's not relevant that she got subpoenaed? Mr. Brooks, she's here under your subpoena. <laughs> what? The, you called her as a witness. The, it's the your subpoena, subpoena that you, the subpoena this is, is relevant because Mr. she Brooks, was already under subpoenaed. Mr. Brooks, under 906 please ask the witness this, this a relevant and probative question. This is mine, by the way. Mine, by the way. She's your witness. <laughs> Remind the jury that the statements of the parties or the attorneys are not Evidence. Oh, what's on the ceiling? So were you aware that it was a chance you would be possibly testifying in this trial? Yes. And did you know who the trial was for? <sighs> Grounds. That was stupid. Sustained. Object to stupidity. Sustained. Not I've never heard of nobody testifying in a trial that they didn't know who the trial was for. Then why would you ask that question? Mr. I think Brooks, that's, I think I'm that's sustaining very the objection under 906.11, and I'm asking you to move on. Man, you all this ridiculous, man. Seems to me like a, <clears throat> like a lot of your uh, answers are coached. Is that fair to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? So the subpoena that you got last week, <clears throat> is that how you learned the name that you used? Objection. Relevance Grounds. For the same reason I argued before. Grounds. Asked and answered. She's indicated the answer already. 906.11, sir. Next question. The question Different was, topic. is that the first time that she saw the name? It's not relevant. Yeah, that Next was question. not asked That was nor, not asked nor answered. Under 906.11, please ask a question, sir. Man, what is y'all people trying to pull, man? This is, this is ridiculous. Mr. Brooks, if you don't ask another question that's relevant and probative under 906.11, then I will turn the witness over to the state for their cross-examination. And then I should be able to uh, get redirect, right? Your Honor? Ask a question, or I will declare the examination by you to be it's, ended. It's not, it's not an examination. It's a direct examination, sir. Under 906.11, you are directed to ask a question, or I will I ask the state if they have I heard any you, questions. Honor. I heard you. I heard you. Thank you. Next question, please. Look at that stare. What an asshole. You know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Yes. Who's the plaintiff? The state of Wisconsin. Is that an entity or a living human being? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Next question. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Vague. Sustained. Vague. As to the form of the question. Have you ever had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Do not answer that question. Next question, sir. Under 906.11. Was there an objection or was that just a ruling? I'm not sure. You're both was talking at the same time. Under 906.11, I directed the witness not to answer that irrelevant question. Ask your next question, sir. This was the same day that he pounded his fist on the um, table and stared the judge down. And she was like, ah, the witness is, has pounded his, de his hand on the desk and now he's staring at me, um, you know, acting like a little three-year-old. But she put it on the record that he'd done that. So this is all what happened before that happened. So it was kind of like everything that happened that day, these these were all his witnesses and nothing was going his way. All of his witnesses were just, in fact, I've got a video that I'm setting up on just how the reactions, because it's just so dumb how, of course, none of them, they weren't prepped, first of all. And secondly, 
none of them were going to do anything to help him. So he, if he doesn't know how to ask the right questions, you know, it's just, it's funny. Anyway, moving on. Ooh, he's mad. Leslie's got him. He got a Leslie lashing. Mr. Brooks, ask your next question. I'm going to get to it. Thank you. He ain't even got a license, Leslie. Look, oh, oh, oh. Did you see that little that little thing on his lip? How his nip, lip snarled again? That's what he does every time he gets real mad. So when did you first report your alleged injury? You do not have to answer that question. Next question, sir. <coughs> Grounds for... 906-11, sub 1, sub A, sub B, and sub C. Is that lawful law? All right, um, you may sit down. Does the state have any questions for this witness? She's like, should I do, what, sh what should I do, Zark? He's like, just get up there and sing him. Throw a Zach singer. She's like, gotta do this. Take that opportunity. <coughs> Ma'am, that day on November 21st of last year, you were there with two kids? I was, yes. What were their ages on that date? Um, Objection. Three relevancy. and. Overrule the witness may answer. Of course he's gonna be overruled. <laughs> three and six. I don't know. Mr. Brooks hits a bell. I'm kind of asking the questions right now. Mr. Brooks, please sit down. Mr. Brooks, you're not asking the questions. I'm not saying anything. I would ask you to sit down, please. It is disrespectful to this witness and to the state and to the court. No, it's not. Hmm. Not doing anything wrong. I'm merely standing here. In front of the jury. I'm an idiot. Yeah, when you were at the parade um, on November 21st of, of last year, approximately where were you watching the parade from? Ask the answer to objection. Mr. Brooks, it's cross-examination. Just because you asked the question initially and she answered does not mean the state doesn't get to follow up on it. So Thank they, you. The state can ask the same question I asked. The state can ask their question. So how Go come ahead. when I did that, it was, uh, it was the witness may it was answer. Sustained. Because they ask the question, you asked it. I was on Main Street, but right by where it, the intersection of um, White Rock, and I was in the roadway. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what's been marked and previously admitted into evidence as State's Exhibit 15. Go ahead. And I ask that the screen be cleared. <coughs> and ma'am, does this show? Can you wait till it's in the jury box. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. The jury would let me know when it's there. <coughs> Okay, thank you. <coughs> would be fair to say is to your left would have been Pleasant Street? That is correct. Okay. Were there barricades blocking Pleasant Street? There were, the <coughs> there were barricades um, that were partially blocked. They, par they were on Main Street, but um, partially blocking Pleasant Street as well. Could a car have gone down Pleasant Street? Yes. Objection. Okay. Ha! Here's the witness may answer. It's not hearsay. So when the red SUV hearsay. came down White Rock Avenue and was making its turn onto East Main Street, as you've testified, it could have just gone straight onto Pleasant Street, correct? Objection. That is correct. It's hearsay. She's speaking as um, a hold first on. A eyewitness. Um, there's an objection. Eyewitness. Mr. Brooks, your objection is noted. It's overruled. The witness as usual. may answer. It's always overruled. <laughs> Go ahead, you may answer, ma'am. <coughs> Sorry, there's a lot of talking. Um, it, your question was, just to clarify, um, could the vehicle have gone straight onto Pleasant Street? Is that right? Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. And where you stayed that you and your kids were 
partially in the roadway when the red SUV came through? Yes, we were. Objection. That's mischaracterization of what was testified to. Overrule the witness may answer. Go ahead. Give me answer. Can you repeat it? Sure. Were you and your kids um, all in the roadway when the red SUV went through? Yes, we were. Okay. You weren't part of the parade, correct? We were not. Okay. So were you standing with other people that were in the roadway? Yes, we were. And was one of your kids going to get candy when the red SUV came through? Yes, she my daughter. She's speaking as a first-hand eyewitness. No, she's not. She is a first-hand eyewitness. No, I'm talking about oh. you. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. The question is proper, and the witness may answer. Yes, my daughter was um, further in the roadway. We were all in the road, but she was further in the roadway, um, reaching to grab candy. At any other time, you, you said that this was towards the end of the parade. Is that correct? Yeah, we saw um, Santa, and he's always at like, the end of the parade. <clears throat> and had your daughter gone to get candy at other times? The entire time. Had she, during the time preceding the red SUV coming through, had she almost been struck by any other participants in the parade? No, she was nowhere near like where the vehicles were driving through the parade. Um, she was, no. Bam. So she's going out to get some candy that had been thrown, I assume, correct? Yes. And overruled the witnesses, answer may stand. And you see this red SUV coming, is it coming from your right or from your left? The red SUV was coming from my right side, which was White Rock. Okay. And how close did it come to your daughter? It was, I, I wouldn't be able to give an accurate judgment, but it felt very, very close. Had you not pulled your daughter away, would that car have hit your daughter? Overrule. It's very possible. There we go. So you Got say him. that you saw a police officer um, have some contact with the red SUV. Do you recall that? Yes. Can you describe that for the jury? Well, there was a few times that police officers attempted to stop the red SUV. The first one was been um, where we were um, on Maine and White Rock. Um, and then there were also other people trying to stop it too. Um, and then again, as it drove, once it turned onto Maine, um, the next road, um, I believe is Buckley. And there was another officer who tried to stop that. Um, the red SUV again. And which is the officer who had to step all the way in order to not get hit by the red SUV? What was the question? Where was the officer located who had to step all the way to avoid being struck by the red SUV? Um, I believe that was the officer around Buckley and Maine. Okay. And ma'am, as the car passed your location, did it increase its speed? Yes. Do you know where in the roadway it traveled down? Direction. Overruled. The witness may answer. <coughs> uh, the direction of travel? Uh, where in the road? Was it on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, or in the middle? It was all over the road. You saw it all over the road? Yes. So going, and why don't you Dri describe for the jury what you saw? Driving um, the vehicle, once it turned onto Maine, it drove um, side to side, and then I lost sight when there were through the people as it got down the hill. Nothing further. Thank you. She squashed him like he, like the bug that he is. Let me read the rest of it. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. You said you observed multiple officers try to stop the vehicle. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, let's restate that you for the jury. Describe one that I think you said it was Buckley, right? Yes. Why didn't you report the other officers that you? allegedly saw attempt to stop the vehicle. I, I don't know what you're asking. <coughs> the report that you 
the interview that was conducted with the FBI. That was who did your interview, correct? Yes. Why was there no, why is it not in the report about the multiple officers that you say you saw attempting to stop the vehicle? I don't know um, why that wasn't put in the report. Do you recall if you told the FBI agents? <coughs> <clears throat> it's been a year. I, I believe so, but it's been a year. When you say it's been a year, <coughs> I'm assuming that means that there's some details you don't quite recall all the way. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it would be fair to say that if there's details you don't recall, how can you recall the path to travel of the SUV that you claim you saw? Because she'll never forget that. Can you can you rephrase the question? I'm not understanding. I think it was clear, but I, I'll, I'll ask again. Ah. <clears throat> you just acknowledged that there may be some details that you don't quite recall. So would it be fair to say that you don't quite recall the path of travel of the vehicle? No, that is not correct. <coughs> Judging by what you just stated, wouldn't it be fair to say that that's a possibility? No. So you recall all the details of what you observed that evening, November 21st, 2021? No. So what other details do you not recall? <laughs> you wonder, how does someone <coughs> recall the details that they don't recall? Yeah, that's what I wonder. Sustain this to the form of the question. <laughs> Seems very funny. <laughs> Seems almost as if you're recalling what you want to recall and purposely not recall. Objection. Don't. Badgering the witness. Yes, sustained. You do not have to answer that, and you are warned. You may not badger or argue with this witness. <laughs> Next question. Two women. Badger or argue. What do you mean? Screaming at him. Next question. What do you mean? Don't intimidate the witness is what I mean. How am I intimidating the witness? Badgering the witness by eye rolling, by pursing your lips, <coughs> by making facial movements, uh, regarding That's her answers she feel is badgering the witness. Are you kidding me? Under 90611, you really please can't, ask you really your can't next be question. You can't be serious right now. <coughs> intimidating the witness. What have I done to intimidate the witness? The last question was badgering, which is a form. Can but you, you say, but you say Mr. Brooks, I've made my ruling under 90611. Please ask a question or I'm I will merely, stop the question. How did I intimidate? Under 90611, sub 1, sub A, sub B, and sub C, ask your next question you, or the questioning of this how witness will even end. A judge? How are you even a judge? Ooh. All right, you may stop. All right, y'all seen that part. You. How are you even a judge? Come on, man. So I have that other part in uh, another video where he goes off. I mean, I love that Leslie was lashing, the Leslie lashing. He, she lashed out at him. And right after that, the judge bounced back and he had two women telling him, you do not do that. And he just cannot handle it. I love it. Uh, reminder, everyone, Friday. He's going into his pretrial for his hearing about Erica's case. 
we will be streaming that as long as the Wisconsin count the Wisconsin courts will allow us to uh, have viewing of it so don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate you guys hitting that like button. I really appreciate you guys sharing this out to anybody if you enjoyed the content. Because guess what? 5,000 subs. I'm so, so close. And when I hit 5,000 subs, I'm doing a giveaway. And let me tell you what the giveaway is. All right. If I can find it. Hang on. I got it right here. Okay. Uh, this is our 90611 FM Grounds Prison Radio. Uh, some of our subscribers helped us come up with that. So if you like that, we'll be giving away a sticker. Uh, we'll do the drawing. Now, if you are a member of the channel and, you're and your name is drawn in this drawing, you will get the choice of either um, a coffee cup with that same logo on it or a t-shirt. And we the t-shirt, there's various colors that it comes in. I personally like the yellow. Um, because it just, I think it just makes it pop. But, you know, you can pick whatever color is available. All righty then. I don't know when that's going to be yet because we got to wait till we get to 5,000 subs. And once we get there, then I'll, I'll give you guys plenty of notice that we're going, um, we're going to be doing the drawing. So stay tuned. And thank you for watching. And you guys have a blessed week. And I'll talk to you very soon. Be good.